Hi, welcome to this video on connectivity based clustering. In the previous video, we saw another type of clustering which was centroid based. In this video, we are going to focus on connectivity based clustering. Uh, we start by importing our standard libraries numpy, pandas, matplotlib, c1. I also import zscore. This is very important in any clustering algorithm or unsupervised learning because these algorithms are very sensitive to scales and we would want all the features to be scaled and that's why I would use z-score. I have saved the data set at the same place on my github repository. I read it directly from my github repository. Now this data set is a, a curated toy data set to facilitate our understanding of uh, connectivity based clustering so here it, it gives customer ID and name there are 10 customers A to J it they all have one two three four five attributes on monthly amount spent number of visits to the store uh, and what do they buy at the store number of times they buy apparel items number of uh, I guess this is fruits and vegetables and number of staples so as we see i noticed two things one is the scales are very different so to for me to get a notion of how different this observation is from this or how similar these two observations are i have to calculate s distance between each of these observations if i use a euclidean measure of distance i would end up with this particular feature dominating all the other features and hence it's very important to scale the data so and then the second thing that jumps out is if you look at customer a uh, they spend on apparel items and food and vegetables but b does not spend on apparel items but mostly on food and vegetables if you see customer e it's uh, exhibits almost the same amount of same behavior with the same roughly same monthly spend similar monthly spend they don't spend on apparel items but they spend heavily on food and vegetables same with g so as i even talk about this i think you should be getting a gist of what we are trying to do perhaps once we do our clusterings you might be expecting to see b E and G to be in the same cluster so before clustering I would scale my data because customer ID and name are not the features I would segregate the features into a separate variable called customer data attributes these attributes would be column 2 to the end column so once I've separated all these, I would just apply Z score. Z score has an effect of subtracting mean of the column from every observation and dividing every obs uh, observation minus mean by standard deviation. So this is a very typical uh, way of scaling data. So it would convert everything onto a number. Uh, and all of these numbers would be on same scale for those who are more interested exactly on what this number is this number is this every observation minus mean of this column divided by standard deviation of this column so what that gives is how many standard deviations away this observation is for this data so this is 1.8 standard deviations away for this data set. This is 0.7 standard deviations away. And because this entire standard deviation is uh, the, the mean of a normally distributed curve is zero. And hence for all of these data sets, the a measure of number of standard deviations an observation is away from the mean would always be on same scale. So we, we have scaled our data, we pass it to the pair plot uh, to get an intuition on the number of uh, clearly segregated data pairs or data that we have. 
so in here i see april items has two clear clearly separated clusters perhaps here also two so at the minimum i'm looking at two clusters so to because this is uh, about connectivity based clustering in specific one type of algorithm called hierarchical clustering i import agglomerative clustering from the cluster library in sklearn now hierarchical clustering if you might remember or something like this where we first calculated pairwise distances identify shortest distance put them in a group them together replace by a centroid again repeat the same process and it would allow us to build trees of this sort now it so happens if we build a tree bottom upwards it is known as agglomerative clustering if we start with one large group having the entire data set and we chop it recursively to separate out into individual items this is known as divisive type of clustering now it's it's rare people using div, uh, divisive algorithm uh, clustering so mostly i've seen people using agglomerative clustering so let's use that we start by instantiating an instance of agglomerative clustering with three clusters and i want all the distances to be euclidean and linkage to be average now linkage if you remember was a way of calculating distance between two clusters and i showed you five different ways five most common ways of calculating these distances i am using an average linkage let let's try play around with multiple type of these linkages and see what happens so once i have created a model i fit the model on the scale data remember you will always use scale data in unsupervised learning especially clustering algorithms now once i have created a model uh in centroid based model especially k means we fit and we predicted the model and the predictions were actually the groups in here as soon as i fit the model i have a method available to the model called labels labels underscore now labels underscore is where all the labels would be stored so i take this create a separate column on customer data set customer spend data set and in those labels i save all the param all the labels that model came up with now i don't need to do a head let's see the entire data set so here uh, because i wanted three clusters it has done chop the entire data set into three clusters 0 1 and 2 and uh, you remember initially our hunch was customer b and uh, oh well let's try adding these labels directly to the full data set customer data set so that it becomes easy now you remember earlier when we said customer b e and g were similar now let's see so b was customer b has been put in uh cluster 1 customer e has been classified cluster 1 customer g also classified in cluster 1 so it has been able to do this correctly and uh, let's group these by these labels and then calculate mean of all of these so i've just grouped this by labels and then once i create a group by object i can calculate sum for the group but in here i want means so average monthly spend for the cluster for people in cluster 1 is quite high compared to the people in cluster 2 uh they visit the store more number of times than the people in cl cluster 2 and they spend more on apparel items and uh, none of the other groups spend on apparel items 
but the group 1 is an extreme heavy spender on food and vegetables so this is broad way where it has segmented all the customers into three broad categories and perhaps now how we can use that or how this information can be used is to have very specific advertisement so imagine if there is a discount on food and vegetables or fresh stock has come you might not want to spend money advertising to all of the customers now this is the group of customers who spend more on food and vegetables so you might want a better targeted uh, advertising campaign targeted only at these same way if you're running any if there is a fresh stock of apples or you're running any discount uh, uh scheme on apples perhaps you might want to target that communication only to people in cluster 0 so let's try drawing a dendrogram as i said these type of diagrams are called dendrograms let's try drawing uh, one of the dendrograms and see how it comes so for drawing dendrogram i would require these two libraries and these both are available in scipy cluster dot hierarchy i also want to import a notion of distance so for that i uh, in in our centroid based algorithms remember we imported c dist now i want pairwise distribution not a distance to centroid i want pairwise distance if you remember i said the primary difference between connectivity based and centroid based one algorithms are for centroid based distance is calculated for every uh, observation to a centroid but connectivity based have a uh, we have to calculate distance between every possible pair of observations and hence while we used c dist function in our example for centroid based classification uh, clustering in our hierarchical clustering we have to calculate every pairwise distance and hence we use p dist so we pass this on to a function called linkage where we pass our shale data set we want euclidean distances and a way to measure distance between the cat clusters we use average method and oh i have to import libraries i beg my pardon once these libraries are imposed imported all the data is stored in this z now i am creating a figure i am giving the figure a title and i am giving x label y label uh, so this is in essence i am putting a label to axes and then i am drawing a dendrogram by passing this z which has all these distance measures and uh, just to prevent it from being a little uh, I'll, in fact let's run it and i'll show you for these to be rotated by 90 degree i put this not absolutely necessary but when you have label names uh, which are little longer uh, you would need this i wanted it to be of specific color and font size so i have passed this but in essence if you use dendrogram and pass all the weights as the distances that you calculated it should be able to draw a dendrogram so this is what it uh, the dendrogram looks like so if you see customer 2 and 3 were grouped together so if if you want three broader groups this would be one group this would be one group this would be one group so if i see group 0 was customer a or customer 1 3 and 4 so in here customer 0 okay i think what has happened is 1 3 4 1 4 6 i have changed the method and metric and that's why it has drawn it a little differently so let's try changing this again Let, let's try some more methods and uh, see how this dendrogram changes but in essence this is a representation of exactly the labels that it has put and at what level these labels would get merged So I've used the same code, but instead of an average method, I've put a complete method. If you remember, 
you can refer back to this complete linkage is the maximum the far the distance between two farthest points uh, in any given two clusters so this mostly has remained the same in the way of class uh, grouping but you would see the distance at which these group would change you see these scales have changed and that's perhaps because our measure of distances would have changed so finally i'm just going to show one more method ward which is the most commonly used method and uh, i i tend personally tend to use the method ward as for me in the problems that i solve it tends to give uh, better results than any other method so this with this we conclude our hands on video for hierarchical clustering in this series we have learned unsupervised learning uh, two major methods for unsupervised learning one method is one one type of unsupervised learning is clustering the other type is principal component analysis clustering uh, the most popular method to do that is k means or in fact clustering can be of two ways one would be centroid based clustering for which we uh, learnt k means and other would be uh, a, a method by which all the pairwise distances are calculated so this would be connectivity based clustering for which we learnt h clust uh, the next video series would be about understanding the other type other broad category of uh, unsupervised learning this type of learning instead of trying to draw clusters we try to reduce the dimensions of the data set and we learn this by the most popular method called principal component analysis thanks for watching the video if you like these videos please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing these videos thank you very much